Hey everybody, we need to talk about Project Cold War. We are in a great spot with this project. Very excited to report to you that first shot went off fine. I proceeded to shoot probably 100, 150 rounds through several boxes and it performed absolutely flawlessly. Now our projects this summer have been a little scattered and all over the place. That is primarily due to my schedule. I am not a full-time YouTuber, so this is something that I do for fun, something I do on the side, and so thusly it gets some leftover time here and there. But I have been trying to be more uh, consistent with the content, and the results have been pretty good. We've been growing very steadily. I also have some news for you that I have resigned from one of the part-time things that I did for the past 20 years, and I've never talked about this on camera before. But for the past 20 years, I have been a high school basketball coach, a varsity basketball coach for the past 20 seasons, and I have resigned. I have retired from that job. I am not doing that anymore. That's why it's a little bit tough for me during the winter to do content because I'm out late at games, long practices of an evening, um, working with players, and I absolutely love that, but the time just came to where I didn't really feel like my time was being as valued there as it would be at home with my family or working on many of my other projects. I still have my main job and YouTube is still going to be a hobby, uh, although I am looking forward to spending a little bit of extra time uh, on the YouTube channel hanging out with you guys. So I have some things to show you. We're going to talk about this uh, Gideon Optics, the Mediator. Uh, had this on top of here for those first shots. Went really well. I have some results from some groups. We were only at 25 yards, but uh, I have some groups here for you on the facts and barrel. Uh, we're going to go over a couple things we like, we don't like, and we're going to talk about the big thing that was the driver of these last couple AR-15 builds, and that is the handguard. Absolutely beautiful unit. Uh, we have a carbon fiber lower. The upper and lower are painted in a graphite, so they're not quite black, they're just kind of black. Uh, Die-free company grip, Elfman trigger. We've got some titanium nickel boron parts here, titanium pins, those are from Anarchy Outdoors. The full build list for this gun is posted as a blog post on my website. Breek charging handle, Elf stock, Gideon mediator optic, and the Stinger handguard, which we're coming back to. Down here on the end, titanium muzzle brake. I still need to maybe clock this. I went ahead and tightened it down. I didn't notice that that port is just kind of, so I didn't notice that it did anything. I might go back and play with that or we might just leave it unsure yet. We have a Faxon bolt carrier group and the PVD Faxon barrel, which performed phenomenally. It is a pencil barrel. Uh, we do have a, a billeted dust cover here and this gun is 100% dialed. The Elf trigger makes this gun it makes you want to shoot it more. It's it's just a phenomenal trigger. Uh, the grip is good. This thing is incredibly light. It's under five pounds. But we want to talk about the handguards here. There has been quite a bit of discussion about lower receivers recently. And from time to time, people start asking about handguards and what's a good handguard. And a lot of people are going to tell you that you got to have the Geisley. You know, you got to have the, uh, the Wilson Combat, the LWRC, uh, the BCM, the Daniel Defense. All those handguards are all two, three, four hundred dollar handguards. Some of them might even be more than that. And so what are you actually gaining or missing when you make a, a handguard selection that is not, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars? Well, as with a lot of things, you're really not missing much. And uh, I, I will stand by that because uh, we're looking at the type of aluminum that is used. It's the same between those companies. We're looking at, at the way in which they lock up. You wanna have a solid lockup. Gone are the days where we're just putting a, a tension screw up against the barrel to hold our handguard on. That, that's long gone. We also are no longer indexing our barrel nuts so that these, uh, so that the bolts line up perfectly. No, no handguards that are worth anything are being installed in that manner anymore. Most quality handguards, and you wanna look for this, they're gonna have an anti-rotation uh, situation. This one, the Stinger, it actually indexes up over the receiver, so that upper receiver is actually keeping this uh, from getting out of a line. Uh, this one is perfectly straight down the middle and it took zero effort to do that. Down here on the bottom, you wanna look at how they're locked up. The new Andersons have a really great lockup from their duty series. The Stinger is right in that same category. I like that it actually has this little pinch plate that goes in between these, so we're not putting any additional stress. 
Uh, a lot of them just let you clamp that down until you can't clamp it anymore. Uh, that puts stress in this metal right in through here and you'll see cracks, uh, potentially you'll see cracks down the road. Hasn't happened to me, but this is designed with this little plate in here so that these are crushed against that plate and thus keeping the aluminum from being fully flexed. I like this lockup that Stinger uses. Um, it seems to be really solid. There is nothing moving on this gun at all. This one's Cerakoted in the Jesse James Cold War Gray, same as the uh, grip and the stock. Uh, I think it looks really good with the titanium and the PVD, but you know, looks aside, uh, a lot of them are going to be either Cerakoted or they're going to be anodized. Uh, Cerakoting is going to wear eventually. Uh, this will wear eventually, and you pretty much just need to be fine with that. We've we've got a beautiful looking gun here. It's something that you know I kind of laid out to make it look like this. It was planned in this direction. So the material and the lockup and the anti-rotation, those are the main things that you're looking for. Uh, Breek Arms has a really good uh, handguard on the market. Um, I've used the Anderson quite a few times. I've even used some cheaper ones and I've used some more expensive ones. Um, I like the Stinger for the value. I have a link for this down below. Uh, it's a good unit. Now you can see here at the top, it has been slotted, it has been drilled, and the Picatinny has been removed. Some people ask, why do you wanna do that? Well, number one is weight reduction. Uh, we don't need that metal right there, and you even see some companies who drill down the side of this as well, and it's really just a framework there at the top. This gun was intended to be lightweight, so I was specifically looking for something, interrupted pick rail and all the slotting and drilling. Uh, this handguard is pretty lightweight and it makes this gun feel really good. I'll tell you, just as a side note, the impulse on this gun is something I've never felt before. It has an unbelievable feel to it and it just makes you want to keep shooting. Entirely enjoyable shooting a 5.56 with this lightweight. I was worried that it might be a little snappy since it's you know a pound and a half, two pounds lighter than the average AR-15. Uh, we do have our full mass bolt carrier in here. That could change the feel when the low mass one gets here. Uh, we'll worry about that later. I don't think it's gonna make it any worse. Uh, if anything, it could make it feel better. I don't know, but uh, the gun feels great and the weight is, is good to go. So I do have some groups here to show you. Again, we're dialing in an optic. We're not shooting for accuracy, so there's quite a bit of things going on here. I shot through several targets, but on this last one here, I tried to save this target to show you guys. So our optic is pretty much dialed in. Again, red dot, 25 yards. This is not gonna be supreme accuracy. Uh, you can see I did make some adjustments right here on this target, but at 25 yards, I'm looking to be about an inch low, and I'm fine with that. That's pretty much where most of my ARs are. We can talk about why we do it like that another day. Uh, good group here, group, 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 group. The facts and barrels seem to do just fine. I shot until this gun, this gun was smoking hot when I was done with it. Uh, didn't seem to uh, affect the group size, although we were not shooting for accuracy. The Gideon Optic performed great. Uh, had a fresh battery in there. It was quick to get dialed and on target. It had no problem holding zero throughout the day. Once we got it where we wanted it, it was rock solid and stayed there. Uh, again, this is not the optic that you're gonna jump out of a helicopter with, but this is a solid optic for uh, potentially a home defense or something like that, or if you just want a cool looking boxy optic for your AR, I think it's a great unit. So the Gideon optic, it has the things that you want and nothing that you don't want. The optic was clear. You're able to change the size of it and you know the brightness and all of those things. It does everything that you need it to do. It has the shake awake. I don't think they're allowed to call it that. They call it something else, but it comes on when you're ready for it. It turns off automatically so you don't waste your battery. And it, it seems like a really quality unit. I'm not gonna throw it off the roof or anything to do any torture testing. There is some of that out there if you wanna punch in Gideon torture testing. Um, this is a perfectly fine optic that I intend to run and use, and so I'm not gonna destroy it just for fun. Uh, I think that they held up pretty well. Uh, the guys at Gideon have been really supportive. We've done some videos with them, and they sent this out for us to try. And so far, so good. I really enjoy it. Anything changes, uh, I'll let you know. Links for all of this are down uh, down below in the comments. Uh, Eagle Run 2.3 is where you'll find that. I make a blog entry for each of our projects and link up all of the great companies that supported us and help the build come together. 
All we have left to do with this gun is swap out a bolt carrier group. This thing performs so well. Uh, we've got some quality components here. The only thing that you're gonna question on this build is the carbon fiber lower receiver. We did that to stay lightweight. I could always swap that out to another one later. Uh, we've got a whole drawer full of 80% lowers that are billeted that we could just mill one of those out and make ourselves a new lower if this one broke for us. Uh, we wanted to see what a lightweight build would do and I'm very happy with how this came out. So hope you enjoyed this project. We're probably not going to shoot this one again very soon. I have several other projects we're going to get to, but we're going to come back to this. We're going to put a sling on it. We might even go take a carbine class with it this fall when it gets a little bit cooler. Um, I definitely would like to put a scope on here and do some accuracy testing with this barrel. But for now, we're going to call this thing good to go, and I hope you enjoyed the project. Uh, YouTube thinks that you'll like this video right here.